this is just so perfect for what you know we need and what we want to talk about. Um, it actually stems from this Hawaiian worldview that everything in the universe was Hano. Everybody say with me, Hano. You know what Hano is, right? Mm -hmm. Birth, born. So um, there's a famous chant, very ancient and long chant, uh, called the Kumulipo. And many of the lines start with Hano, which means born. So the first organism that was born was coral, and then the sea life was Hano, and then the plants, and then the animals, and then finally man. And what it is, is we're all in this one mo'oku'oho, one genealogy. So we're related to the coral. We're related to the plants and animals and the birds we see around us. And, and that's the concept that we have here, that everything was born, including the winds and rains. So my mom two publications. Um, Hano Kauua consists of about 200 rain names from across the Pai Aina, uh, across the archipelago, including um, Nene, which is songs, chants, poetry, and Mo'olelo, which is stories, history, um, narratives, uh, and Olelo no Eo, which are proverbs, sayings. Um, all those things contain Hawaiian rain names, so examples of the rain names in those um, types of material. And then Hano Komakani consists of, so far, um, more than 600 wind names also from across the Paiaina. And that one, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so because it's so much larger, there's so many more wind names that we're working with, the um, editorial collection phase is also taking much longer. So the book that you see there um, is going to be like three times bigger for the wind names. Yeah, you don't want to fall asleep reading that one. <laughs> <laughs> you might hurt yourself. <laughs> so you might ask why so many rain and wind names. And we know our kupuna, our elders, were so akamai. They were so smart. They were so observant of their surroundings. And they were very attuned with their environment. They knew the path a rain would take or a wind would take, what time it would arrive, when it would stop, what smells, sounds accompanied that what kind of effect those things had on people. And you see some of those aspects actually in the names of the rains and winds. Um, but it also goes to show you, if you were to talk with a modern climatologist, they would tell you that Hawaii's um, rainfall pattern and wind pattern are very complex. And that has to do with, with our topography, yeah? So our aina is shaped differently, and that affects the way the rains fall, the way the winds blow. And so that's probably why our kupuna were able to name and recognize so many things besides their um, astute observational prowess um, because they were able to recognize these things, but because there are so many different rains and winds. If you pay attention, you will recognize those subtle differences, and they did. And so they named hundreds and hundreds, and they could tell them apart one from another. Where can you find these uh, wind and rain names? Well, I started off with the Hawaiian Dictionary. Uh, there's quite a few in there. Um, there's Olelo Noel, which Kiali mentioned, which is Hawaiian sayings. And there's a legend that has many wind names. Um, the Paka'a, Kua Paka'a legend. The Bishop Museum archives, um, I spent many, much many hours at the archives of the Bishop Museum. And there's the audio collections <coughs> and nupepa.org. So there's Hawaiian newspapers. <coughs> Today we open up the newspaper and it's all in English. Well, back in the 1800s, you opened up a newspaper, it was all in Hawaiian. And even up to the 1900s. Even so up there to the 1900s. Hawaiian language newspapers. Yeah, and most of it has not, they have not been translated. And that is a huge source for us. So a lot of the material in, in our books um, are, are being seen for the first time in translation, in English translation. So in what context have rains and winds been used, again, mele, mo'olelo, olelo no ino, because so much of that talks about aina, right? And when our kupuna, and even us today, when we talk about our aina, our rains and winds are part of that aina. So when they would mention it, those are opportunities where you might find your rain or wind name. Um, some interesting examples, there was um, 
a doctor who had developed some sort of skin ointment that he said could cure any sort of skin ailment. And so he kind of advertised in the newspaper and he said, I'm going to the Apa'apa'a winds of Kohala. And if you're interested in this, come meet me there. So that was in the Hawaiian language newspapers that my mom mentioned. Pale hana aloha. So back in the day, if you were interested in someone, um, romantically, <laughs> but they were, well, they didn't necessarily know you or weren't um, paying so much attention to you and you needed some help, I guess, to kind of gain their attention. Um, you could seek a kahuna hana aloha. That's an expert to, in lovemaking or in um, relationship building, I guess. <laughs> Another way to put it. Um, but if you're the recipient of that and you somehow um, are onto this, you could pale or ward that off with a chant that evokes the strength of the kona wind to pale or break off, ward off the effects of that hana aloha. And then a political campaign. Um, there was somebody running for the House of Representatives and he also wrote in the newspapers to his constituents and he was running for re-election. And he addressed them by addressing all of the wind names of their aina. And by doing so, he's showing them, I'm Kama Aina to our place, to our home. And so I'm Kama Aina to you and your needs. We're from the same place and I'll be the best representative for you. I didn't check that out. <laughs> but he made a pretty convincing case, I think. I believe. I would have voted for him. Okay, so we're going to take a whole kai, a trip around our Hawaiian archipelago. But we want to honor this aina, kapa'a. And so um, one of the reigns of this aina is kea. Everyone say with me, kea. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody know what kea means? White. 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 Kea reign of kapa'a. And this is um, a chant, a lament for Queen Emma. Okay. He ua kea kopuna. He ua maila i kua ahiahi. He ua ho omali e kai no maka iwa. He ana ana i ka laula o ka paa. Puna has a white rain, raining now at kua ahiahi. A rain that quiets the sea of maka iwa, which is, I believe, right out here nearby. Yeah. Am I right? Well, that way. That way. Okay. <laughs> okay. Measuring the expanse of ka paa. Okay, so one of the winds here is Inuvai. Everyone say with me, Inuvai. Inuvai. Anybody know what that means? What, okay, what is vai? Water. Inu, drink. Drink water. Inuvai wind is the drinking water wind. Hua nani o kapa'ai vai honei. Keha keha i kapa'a aka Inuvai. Beautiful is kapa'a as it lays. Majestic in the blowing of the Inuvai wind. So, my kai, beautiful. Okay, we're gonna start our huakai on our oldest island, um, oldest in Hawaiian viewpoint, um, Hawaii Island, Moku Okeage. And um, this is the kind of material we find in the Hawaiian newspapers. So I'm gonna read to you the English. Um, it is an example of very detailed information our kupuna knew about uh, their winds and names. So I'm only gonna read part of it in English, okay? This rain frequent, frequently begins between the hours of 8 and 11 in the morning and between 1 and 3 in the afternoon, okay? So now, it tells you exactly when it comes, yeah? How many of you know when your wind or when your rain comes? Raise your hand. Okay, mahalo. Yeah. So, yes, be observant, okay? So the rest of you, your homework tonight and tomorrow and this week, you check out when your wind comes, when your rain comes, okay? Now it says, it is very compact in the way it moves along, pouring down heavily and finally showering lightly. So they could tell the intensity of the winds and the rains. It becomes visible as it starts to move over the northern extremity of the Lehua laden forest of Hana Eva. So when you guys do your homework, and checking out your winds and rains, yeah? Do the lonoa, the census, yeah? What does it look like, yeah? Can you see the coconut trees rustling, yeah? Or are these leaves, you know, um, <coughs> blowing, okay? What does your rain smell like, yeah? Um, what path does your wind take? Senses, sight, okay, here, what does it sound like? What does it smell like? What does it taste like? If I'm by the ocean, my wind and my rain might have this salt 
tea taste. Yeah. Okay, but anyway, that's how detailed our Kikuna uh, knew about their uh, makani. What is makani? And ua? You guys, so akamai. So akamai. So um, I want to share with you, um, since we're talking about Hawaii Island, um, the most famous reign of Hilo. Anybody know? Kani lehua, mahalo. Um, one of the definitions is, you know, lehua blossom. And kani is to sound on the lehua blossoms. So the rain sounds on the lehuas. Now, in Kiali and I have been doing research, and we found that the place that has the most rains in all of the Hawaiian uh, chain is Hilo. Okay, so a lot of us are familiar with the Kani Lehua rain of Hilo, but there's many, many more. Okay, so um, I'm we're going to share with you a hula that was taught to me by Uncle George Holokai, um, and it's called Ano Ai. Okay, now a lot of us know the word Aloha; it means greetings. But ano ai also means greetings, yeah? So, you know, I, I mentioned that to my home mom and my students at Kamehameha. So there's one student, almost every day I see him, instead of saying aloha, he goes, ano ai. <laughs> so you can also use that as well, ano ai. <laughs> so um, the um, chant goes, greetings to my dorm in the Kanilehua ring, okay? Beautiful is the lehua flower of Hilo, whose chief is Hanakai. It goes all the way. So this chant is in honor of King Kalakaua. And we're going to do it with the uli uli. Okay, so we're doing this makeshift uh, <laughs> sound system. Ano <laughs> ai. Uh, more than just you know entertainment also telling a story but they also have information and data and they capture all of that so there's so much that we can find in our mele reading hard yeah <laughs> your turn to talk yeah you don't you're not supposed to out of shape and i didn't stretch <laughs> okay so this next one rain of kilauea okay um actually we're going to be presenting at volcano national park um in february february 16th and then we can be on Hawaii Island. Um, and um, so one of the rains there is called the Aba. Okay, you guys, have you ever heard of Aba? Okay, like 
then there's the other, then you drink mm -hmm. the other plant, but there's also the other rain. And um, here we have the English for you, and we're gonna play the Hawaiian. Uh, so you can hear the person, the informant, who gave this information, um, relay her um, information about the other <coughs> rain. In Hawaiian. Um, she was recorded at Ka'alaya on Oahu, um, and that was actually her voice. And you know, through these kinds of presentations, we're so fortunate and honored for one to be able to share. Um, but then also the connections that come with it. When we were here on Kauai last, we actually got to meet a Mo'opuna, a descendant of Hilda Ho'ohila Cabello. She was brought to us to our table. Um, we were selling our books at the Mokihana Festival. And um, she said, you know, my tutu came to me in a dream and she was telling me something about rain. And then I'm like, who's your tutu? And she said, Ho'ohila Cabello. Oh my gosh, <laughs> this person. We quote in our book, we share her leo in our presentations. And she just started crying because maybe that was what her tutu was trying to tell her. So yeah, we actually got to meet a living descendant, her ohana, yeah. So that's really special for us. Okay, this is one of my favorite um, sources, information. Um, this is an obituary in the Hawaiian newspaper. And I'll read the English, okay? Um, it's an example of how our kupuna looked at the winds and rains as more than just natural elements, okay? So it says, yes, my younger sister was born in Puna of the fragrant walls in the Polo Hinano rain. However, it was the Kanilehua rain of Hilo that raised her. She was a favorite, a beloved child of Laikanavai Lau in the Popo Lehua rain, rain that scatters the leaves of the Ohia of Hilo, okay? So here she's saying, the Kanilehua rain raised the child, yeah, yeah. So it's not only winds and rains, but it's some, it's a, uh, our kupuna had a, uh, a familial relationship to these elements. So this slide shares with us some examples of um, rains as a source of pride and identity. So like we were talking about earlier, Rains and winds are part of the aina. When you find them in, in sources, typically the phrase in Hawaiian for a rain name will be like kaua apuakea o kane ohe, or the apuakea rain of kane ohe, or um, uh, he, he makani awa ko kane ohe, kane ohe has an awa wind. So that's sort of a possessive, it's a possessive pattern. It's showing that relationship such that the aina, in a way, these rains and winds belong to the aina. Um, because like, as we talked about before, the topography of the land really has an effect on these places. Um, so maybe that's what's being expressed in that relationship, and, and so much more. Um, and so that is, and if topography has effect on the rains and winds, our homeland, our aina, is a source of our identity as a people. You know, our aina, that's what feeds us, what nour nourishes us. Um, that's where we get our sustenance. That's also where we bury our dead, our ohana. And so we get mana from the land and we return ourselves to the land. So there's a special connection that we have with the aina and all aspects of it, which includes the rains and the winds. This particular example, which starts with mahalo piha, 
Um, at this point in the excerpt, the author who wrote this is no longer naming people by their names, but referring to them simply by the reigns of their homeland. The Kanilehua reign, the Pau Pili reign, the Kanilehua Hilo Maui, Pau Pili Lahaina, or Wailehua Lahaina Maui. And some of the most famous reigns and wins were synonymous to the land in which they existed. So there's a string figure chant that goes, O Kohala Aina Waha Heo Ika Wa Apa Apa. Kohala is a land that's so proud of its Apa Apa reign. Apa Apa is the name of a reign and wind as Kohala. And sometimes the district itself, instead of just being referred to as Kohala, would be referred to as Kohala Ua Apa Apa, Kohala of the Apa Apa reign. Okay, so um, here's an example where there's one wind in Kohala, but as it's traveling, yeah, and it meets some obstacles or you know some hills, etc. The characteristic of this wind changes. So it starts off being called apa apa, and as it moves and it gets more gentle, it will be called a a. And then as it continues to move and it's like kind of like um, massaging, yeah, a massaging kind of feel, it's called kauni. So one win, but I could put, I could see the differences. Here is an interesting one. Um, so Kaleo Hawaii was a radio program, and Larry Kimura was a host for many, many years. Um, this was like in the 1970s. Uh, and one of the people who often would speak on the show was his uncle, Uncle Joseph uh, Maka'i. And he, in this particular episode, talked about his experience with a particular wind, the Hulumano, and how it's actually connected with um, Huaka'ipo, uh, the night marches, Huaka'ipo Kane, yeah? So um, this is kind of a, some of it's um, translation, a translation of what he said. Um, but he recalls when he was little, he and his grandfather were traveling on foot, and they met up with this. Kulumano. And my grandfather said, ah, let's return home via the uplands. And then Uncle Joe asked him, what's this? You're saying for us to re return via the uplands, can we not return along the shore on the sand? I don't want to return on the uplands because of all the rocks and my feet will get hurt. And his grandfather responded, the Kulumano is blowing, that's the night marchers. So while they were returning home, his grandfather told him, lie down, and he pushed Uncle Joe down. Uncle Joe didn't understand. But after the wind had stopped, they got up and continued home. Once they got home, Uncle Joe asked his grandfather, why did you push me over? And his grandfather explained that was the night marchers. And when this wind blows, it is the time of the night marchers. And so that's why I said to you, if we had no relatives among the marchers, then we would have been killed. But we do have relatives, that's why we were spared. So if you've heard night marcher stories before, you might have heard something similar, but not always in relationship to a wind, but here, at least the story that I've heard before. So this is the first one I've heard in which it's um, actually related to a wind. Have any of you heard um, <coughs> Mo'olelo stories of night marchers? Mommy. I see some of you here. Yeah, anybody want to share a Mo'olelo? I've seen the wind. You've seen that one? Really? Yeah. It's only a special detail about them. Is that I heard about them and I could see the, how the dust, because I'm not ready, the way they were, they would come up from them, from down from them, and it was about five something. But they would see them coming down into and then crossing the road and then going down towards the beach. And then this particular trail, because that's the way they would march. So all the way down from there and then all the way, and I saw them in the rear view mirror of my car and I wow. said, oh, oh,
of that kind of you know, element in the brain. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, Maui. Anybody from Maui? No. Okay. Oh, one oh, person. Where? Oh, Maui. What part? Hana. Hana. One in Greece. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we, we have Ohana stepping all the way from Hana. I, yeah, uh, yeah. I've seen your name, so I know the family there, the oh, Hana really? family. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 So we actually have, on Maui, we have Ohana on Hana and also Ka'ana Palia. On two ends of, the, of Maui, they, they <coughs> met. <laughs> okay. We're going to talk story later about Hana. Yes, <laughs> yes. Okay, so um, say with me, Kula Ivi. Everyone say, Kula Ivi. Kula Ivi. It's made up of two words, Kula and Ivi. Kula is like the plains. What is Ivi? Bones. Bones. Bones, yeah. So the Kula Ivi is the land, the plains where the bones are buried. In other words, where our kupuna are buried. So when you say my kula ivi, you're talking about your ancestral homeland, okay? So like I was telling that gentleman, um, our ohana comes from hana and also ka'ana pali. Um, and if you go to uh, Maui, next time you go to Maui and you happen to be on the ka'ana pali side, um, check out this, it's a hotel condo called Kaki Maui. So Paki is our Ohana name. Yeah, Pilahi Paki, if you've ever heard of Pilahi Paki, that's my grandmother's first cousin. Um, so that that is a Kula Ivi, yeah? But um, now that there's a hotel on it, um, I thought I wanted to recognize our Aina because that was the place that once sustained my Ohana for generations. And so I composed a mele honoring the area. And it's called Kukilakila Mikahanohano. Standing majestic and grand, the Paki house is full of joy as the Nahua wind strikes at Mo'omuku. Okay? Um, now, the word Nahua okay, comes from Nahu. Anybody knows what Nahu means? Yeah, yeah, I see it. Nahu means to bite. So can you imagine what this wind is like? Yes. You go there, you probably will feel it, the Nahua. Now, that place has the Nahua wind and the Nahua rain. Mm -hmm. So some places, the name of the wind and rain is the same for some other places. So in this case, it is, yeah. So, do you have Kukila Kila? Yes. So, um, I will share with you um, this melody that I composed for our Kula Ivi. Boy, this light is strong. Is there a way to <laughs> No more like one cover, yes. Turn it. I know. Yeah, but it's not easy. Cookie the killer.
mention a little bit about how rains and winds get their name. So it could be by their effect on people, like the pe'epohaku rain of Kopo Maui. It's a sudden rain, so it causes people to hide pe'e behind pohaku rocks. A rain or wind could be named after its own characteristics, like the kea rain we mentioned earlier here at Kapa'a. It's also a famous rain of Hana Maui, um, and means white, and it's a misty rain seen off of the coast in the morning, <coughs> off of Hana. And then there's the aha aha wind, which gives us an example of how rains and winds might actually be connected to other aspects of nature. So when they would feel this aha aha wind, they knew that the aha aha fish was gathering in pools, and it's time to go holo holo. This is at Waiahu Maui. And a rain and wind could be named after the place where it's located, like the Kauaula rain and wind. Um, there's a valley there in Lahaina Maui, also named Kauaula, and you can find that rain and wind there. E once every 50 years, we're told, this wind, it's very destructive, and we'll talk more about it later, I think. <laughs> um, but the people, the Kama'aina knew that it was coming because it would blow through a whistle, uh, it would whistle through a puka in the mountain, mm -hmm. and they would hear it, and it was a super destructive wind. Mm -hmm. Do I keep going? No, no. Stop. Okay. <laughs> I think there's a slide coming up. My turn. <laughs> okay, say it me. Kaua ula. Oh. It's made up of three words. Ka, ua, ula. What is ula? Red. red. What is ua? Rain. Rain. The red rain. Kaua ula. But it's not only a rain, it's a wind. Mm -hmm. Okay? And it's actually a famous wind of Lahaina. Mm -hmm. um, there's a church called Waine'e Church, and actually Kiale and I were just in Maui, and we just w went to Waine'e Church. <laughs> um, well, it was destroyed in 1858 and 1951. Kupuna Alexa Vaught, um, she told us about this mo'olelo, and she's the one who hosted it, us when we were on Maui a couple weeks ago. And she told us about this very destructive wind, um, and how her uncle actually saw the whole church rise up. Yeah, and th this wind has destroyed coconut trees. It has destroyed homes. Fortunately, it only comes like one every 50 years. Yeah. Okay, so um, we're telling this mo'olelo. And after a presentation, a woman named Kathy Ballesteros came up to us and said, you know, I know that church very well. She said, my um, ohana, my great-grandfather was the kahu of that church. Um, and it's kind of sad because the day that that wind blew was the day that he passed away. Mm -hmm. yeah. And because um, that poor church <laughs> got destroyed twice by this Kauaula wind, they actually renamed the church. So it was Wei Ne'e. Ne'e means to move. I don't know if that has any had any implication. Um, but you know, traditional Hawaiian naming practices, if something's not going right, then sometimes you search for the answer, you ho'oponopono, you try to fix it, and maybe the answer is to give a new name. And they did that. They called it, it's now known as Waiola. And ever since, it hasn't been destroyed. <laughs> and Waiola, why is? Water. water. Ola is? Life. life. So water of life, Waiola Church. Okay, so, um, a lot of our information comes from chants. And this one was composed by Bernice Pawahi Paki Bishop. Which school did she found? Anybody? <laughs> Kamehameha schools. How many of you went to Kamehameha? Come on, you guys. I know you. <laughs> These one right here, my classmates from Kamehameha. And you get to say aloha. Aloha. <laughs> but I, I'm also, well, actually, two of us too, yeah. So, so anybody else? Oh, three, what, wait, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> okay, so yes, we're from Kamehameha, and no one could be prouder. But anyway, um, our founder, Bernice Pawahipaki Bishop, um, she composed a melody for her cousin, who is Kamehameha the Fourth, and um, she wrote a kaniko. Everybody said to me, kaniko. So a kaniko um, was written for a dear friend or a relative who passed away. And a lot of times um, they would talk about where this person went. 
And when they uh, mentioned where the person went, they would mention the winds and rains of those places. So we get a lot of our information from Kanikao. Um, here she says, my dear cousin from the Ma'a'a wind, opening the doors of the homes that we lived in, in the calm of Lele, where we would see the bays of Pi'ilani. So um, this is the Ma'a'a wind of, also of that area, Lele, which is another name for Lahaina. So we're moving on to Koho'olawe. Anybody been to Koho'olawe? Oh, one there. Oh, you guys travel, yeah? Oh, oh. Yeah. Somebody lives in Kuali'i. Wow. Yay! Aloha. Oh, aloha. I didn't see you back there. Aloha. I haven't been here lately. Okay, thanks. So this is an example from the book Olalona Eau, and it goes, Pa kamakani o kamwa'e, hele kalepo o koho'olawe i ma'alaya. When the Moa'e wind blows, the dust of, dust of Koho'olawe goes toward Ma'alaya on Maui. And the Moa'e is a name for our trade wind. So you can actually find the Moa'e you know, across the Pai'aina. Um, but there's multiple names for the trade winds depending on where you are on the Aina. Lana'i, who's been to Lana'i? Yay. <laughs> We're gonna go to La yeah. We're gonna be presenting in Lana'i, possibly in May of next year. Okay, so most of our um, sources are Maka'olela Hawaii in Hawaiian, but we do have sources that are English, and this is one of them. It says, the rainfall on the top lands is 35 inches a year, on the, and on the lower slopes, 12 inches. But the porous volcanic rocks hold the precipitation poorly. From September to November, that's like just recently, the rains are likely to appear in sudden local showers called Naulu. In the winter months, the island is visited by Southwest or Kona rainstorms. Okay, Molokai, anybody from Molokai? Anybody been to Molokai? Yeah. Oh, wow, there's a lot of you. Okay. Travelers in the house. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, Hilo has the most rains in the archipelago, as far as we found. Halawa Molokai has the most winds. There's said to be 80 different winds. So, and specifically, this example says there are 80 different ho'olua winds. So it might be ho'olua, da 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 da, ho'olua, da da da. They all start off with the name ho'olua. Okay, so um, Dennis Kamakahi. Anybody knew Dennis? He passed away, yeah. yeah. He was a couple years ahead of us at Kamehameha. Yeah, he was also a kahu, yes. So he composed this mele, Namakani Eha. What does that mean, Namakani Eha? The four winds, yes. And he talked about um, the winds of the northern valleys of Molokai. Yeah? I know a lot of you raise your hand, you've been to Molokai, but how many of you have been to the northern shore like Bailao, Pelekunu, Baikolu, anybody? Yes. Oh, I tell you, beautiful. I've been there. I was fortunate to have gone there with um, one of the founders of Sierra Club in Hawaii, um, Lauren Gill. But anyway, um, Dennis writes this mele, um, it's a, actually, he said it was about a sea captain who went to all these valleys, and every time he went to a valley, he found a wahine. <laughs> <laughs> and so, <laughs> yeah, that's what the, the winds are supposed to represent the wahine. And he said he's actually related to one of those wahine um, who met the sea captain. <laughs> Oh yes, okay, so I'm gonna dance it. I actually choreographed this um, hula. Um, it starts with halava, and the name, uh, one of the winds there is ho'olua. Remember there's 80 different ho'olua winds in halava. Um, so I'm gonna do this motion and this wish motion because there's two, yeah, ho'olua. Um, vailau, vailau has a wind called ekepue, and that means to hide, okay? So you see me do this motion. Then pelekunu, um, the wind name is Pu'upilo, and it's a smell, it means smelly, moldy, okay? So you're gonna see me do this, smelly, yeah? And then Waikolu um, has a wind called Kili O'opu, and Kili O'opu is also a name of a rain, and it's kind of like um, soft, so I'll do like half a wind like this, okay? So if I don't make mistakes, that's what you're gonna see. <laughs> okay, so Namakani Eha. Ela vinha eu e no halava mai, e na 
and the Ho'olua from the north and east. The house destroying wind of this place is the Ho'olua. The houses that are weak and that haven't been secured will fall down. The Kona is a strong wind, not like the Ho'olua. The Kona is weak here, but it is noisy on the Ko'olau side of the islands. Kailua area, Makawao area, Waimanao area, it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> So this is also, um, again, um, a eulogy. Um, Manoa, Palolo, and Honolulu rain. Okay. It says, the Kuahine rain of Manoa, the Lililehua rain of Palolo, which I just described to you, the very tiny droplet. The Kukalahale rain, Honolulu, that's Honolulu's rains, and the famous rains of this extraordinary land, you will never again moisten aunties sweet skin. Yeah. Yeah. But we have, we find a lot of uh, obituaries like that, mentioning the same kind of thing. Okay, so um, one of my kumuhula was um, Himo Alama Keolana. I get, yeah, he's our class, I guess. <laughs> but anybody else know him? Himo Alama Keolana. He played, he's a famous musician. He also teaches hula. Um, rascal guy. But anyway, um, <laughs> He gave us some information, and I'll read it to you. It says, Manoa is divided into two sections. The Ali'i, or chief side, by Waioli Tea Room. Anybody know what Waioli Tea Room? Okay. And the Kanaka, or commoner side, by Safeway in East Manoa. Okay, the Tuahini rain moves faster than the Luahini rain, and Luahini means old woman, yeah? And travels through the Ali'i side, stopping at the Cook Mansion. Next to the mansion is Kuka O'o Heyo, and under it is a cave where a brother and sister took refuge. They broke the aikapu, or eating law, when they ate together, and thus the sister was turned into the tuahine rain. Tuahine, or kuahine, means sister of a male. The brother was turned into the wind, kahokane, which pushes the tuahine along. Mm -hmm. Now Kuka O'o Heyo is the last remaining Heyo in the Kona district of Oahu. Mm. If you go back to Oahu, or somebody go to Oahu, um, you can make reservations to go see that um, Kuka O'oheo is with Manoa Heritage Center. Check it out, check the website out, Manoa Heritage Center. My good friend Aloha McDuffie works there, and she showed me where the Tuahini rain stops. Because where it stops, one side is brown and the other side is green. Okay, so um, again, Himo Alama Keolana, uh, he composed this mele called Nani Manoa. Beautiful is Manoa. Uh, it says, He Nani o Manoa, Vehi Taua. Beautiful is Manoa, adorned in rain. <coughs> taua Tuahine, Kupa Oka Aina. The Tuahine rain, true daughter of the land. Um, and uh, he wrote, he composed this mele. And he also choreographed the hula that we're gonna dance to. Um, but you know, you guys knew that um, the Kanilehua rain is famous in Hilo. Well, the Tuahini rain is the famous rain of Manoa.
Kalu'u Ahukua'a from He'ea Ahukua'a on O'ahu. It also exists at Ma'ili'eli on Hawaii Island. The Apuakea rain, so famous to Ko'olau Poko O'ahu, also is found at Hanamoi and at Hilo, Hawaii. And so... Apuakea rain, Apuakea <coughs> Yeah. And it's probably because um, these, you know, rains and wind can name their types. They're named after their type, how their, char their own characteristics, um, and various other reasons. But because of that, you can find an Apuakea rain in a few different places, Ko'olau Poko, Hilo, and Hana. Kauai! Hey, 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 hey. We're here! Woohoo! <laughs> okay, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, our queen, Lili'u Kalani, composed a melody called Kamakani Lavakua. Kamakani Lavakua. So you guys translate. What does that mean? Lavakua wind. Yeah. So the name of this wind is Lavakua. Okay. Um, and she used something called Kauna. Say with me, Kauna. K-A-O-N-A. Kauna. Kauna means underlying meaning. Okay. So she's talking about this Lavakua wind, but she's actually means something else, okay? Mm -hmm. Because lavakua means, it's not only the name of the wind, but it means muscular, strong physique. Imagine a bus guy, you know, lifting weights, that kind of stuff. That would be a lavakua, okay? So, as I read this to you in English, I want you to think of kauna, underlying meaning. What is she really talking about, okay? Here you go. The lava cool wind errs in judgment. The rain beats in confusion against the cliffs. Yet it moves lightly through the young Lawai fern. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Somebody's got it there. <laughs> and a sweet scent is carried in the air to me. <laughs> okay, so, mahalo. You guys, some of you are getting it. Maybe all of you got this. Okay, so, um, what are we going to do? A hula. Um, you know, we want to do as many uh, kawaii numbers as possible. So this one is called um, Kalalau Pali. And you guys are familiar with, it's not Pali. Uh, one of the major winds there is Lavakua. Okay, so we're gonna dance this with the uh, ulili. Say with me, ulili. Okay, ulili is a bird uh, along the shore. In fact, when I was in Maui, I was watching this ulili bird. Oh, poor thing, because the kolea bird, you know kolea, was chasing the ulili bird. Oh my gosh. But anyway, um, ulili is the name of the bird. It's also the name of this instrument um, that you actually kind of rarely see nowadays. Yeah. Okay, so this is Kalalau Pali. Um, and it says, Kalalau Pali hit by the wind, the lava cool wind blows, always returning to Kolokin. Why don't you come from this side up here? Um, this is a hula noho. Um, the choreography of this was taught um, by Auntie Mikey Ayu Lake. Some of you may be familiar with her. And it's actually a hula noho. Um, Kiali will do it as it should be done. Um, but I, I'm going to stand up and do it so that the back row can see me. Okay? All right. I kalalau poli e kui kamakani. Kalalau. Kalalau poli e kui kamakani. Kalava kuo maui polo ki. Nua. Nua na hulu papa ana i hula. Ana hulu mena poke e nua. Elua hono ku oya tua kanaka Elua ko amano me vaya loha Kapali Kapali wahari ho wahari ho me te kua Kekengi ku ilo ko o kapali nui Ehi iana Ehi iana e makua i kalala Kalalau kali ku i 
kamakani. Himele no kalalau pali. Okay, so um, this, the Queen of the Oakland, continues. Okay, this is her next verse. Um, and again, big cow now, okay? She says, don't act that way, young deep butt, as she gets to know a bit of the how fire bread. You know what we're talking about, right? Okay, for I am the lupu wind of Wainiha, the pahelehala wind of Nawe by the sea. So here's our queen, queen in the Okamani, saying in a song, I, I am the Lupu wind. I am the Pahelihala wind, okay? So um, this is what I call kind of like the female um, version, uh, female verse, whereas the other one I call it sort of like the male verse. Yeah? So we'd like to share with you um, also a hula noho and um, this hula noho was composed by the people of Kauai for Queen Ka'ahumanu because she was about to wed the king of this island, yeah, King Ka'umu Ali'i. <coughs> so again, this is by the people of Kauai. Okay. Um, do you have a slide for it? E kuwa na kamakani ina hala o malelewa'a kui ia e lupua halu'a ala jukoli. The wind is blowing amongst the hala trees of Malalewa'a, strung together by the Lapua wind, thick perfume on her bosom. So we present to you a Kuwana Kamakani. Kiali again will do the Hula Noho, and for all you guys in the back. <laughs> right, that's why you're standing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ai he mele no keli iwahine ka ahumanu e puana e puana ka wakani ila e ina hala o malewa kui ia.
Okay, so, um, <coughs> yeah, <laughs> no Healy, oh, so great uh, experience. So here's a melee called no Healy, um, and you hear, pa iho kamokani he Q, the Q wind blows. Ike ia eka noi in the iho, the mist in the iho is seen. Ho o hai hai o na ika na ulu, stirring up na ulu shawls. Kamakani miki oi o lehua, the miki oi wind of lehua. So when we were out there at Nohili, we were able to see Mi'ihau plus that tiny island of Lake Ua. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'd like to present to you Nohili. And this is my choreography uh, with the Ili Ili. So even though on our Huaka'i we are at Mi'ihau, this mele was with us, still here on Kauai, but looking out at Mi'ihau. I Ike Ike Oni Kania Ono Ili Ike 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 Oni Kania Ono Ili Meka Paha Paha Le Ya O Poli Hale Ike Ike Ika Vai Ula Oma Na Na Nyu E Bola Ika O Na Haleva Hi Ho. Hai ho kamakani la he kiu, ike ia e kanoe la ini i hau. Ho hai hai. Ho o hai hai ana e kana ulu, kamakani miki oe la i le hua. Pupu. Pupu kani oe ko kaua i tuni hi ha upu au. the rains and winds um, 
um, they help us to determine when's a good time to do things. Actually, the aha aha win example, that was one. So when we see the aha aha wins at Wayahumaui, we know the aha aha fish are in. So it's still part of our <coughs> activities that, that we do today. Rains and winds are part of our aina that we talked about before. So by knowing more about them, we know more about our aina. And when we know more about our aina, we really know more about ourselves, where we come from. And this, this is the connection, the kinds of special connections that we want to have with our aina and all that, that's a part of it. So um, Hakumere continue to write songs with rains and winds in them, explaining their own experiences, including my mom. Can I share? <laughs> no, just, just last week, I got a call. This guy says, oh, um, I'm, I'm writing a song for this uh, person. Can you tell me the name of the wind for Kalia in Waikiki? I said, sure, yeah, I'll tell you. And so I said, awesome. You know, he's writing a song, and he wants to use the wind name. So yeah, you guys can call me too. We <laughs> <laughs> need the wind or rain name, yeah. You got the rainbow, but we also have the wind, so yeah, just give me a call. We just love it when people actually make use of these, um, you know, the other night when we introduced ourselves, yeah. When you introduce yourself next time to whoever, you tell them, I come from this wind, I come from this rain. Can, can, can. Hiki no. Hiki no. Okay. Moving on. Okay. Hopes for these publications. <coughs> Olelo Hawaii, yeah? Everybody, never too late to learn Olelo Hawaii if you haven't already. Um, and strengthen, strengthen our connection with our aina and malama aina, okay? So, Kauai, this is um, one map of your island. And, eh, there you go, oh, oh, okay. So, Kiale composed a mele. Yeah, so when we were in the thick of editing Hano Kaua, um, I was inspired because at the same time, my daughter came home from preschool and she was singing the song that we all learn as we're, when we're young. Rain, rain, go away, come again another day. I was like, no, we don't want everything to go away. We need the rain to stay. So I kind of retooled that one and I said, let's sing it like this. Rain, rain, stay, 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 we want you for another day. <laughs> so I was thinking, oh, we can do more than that. So I composed a mele um, to try and teach my daughter the rains, the famous rains of our aina, and also the moku, the larger district. So we go around the moku puni of Oahu, that's where we live, and we start with Ko'ala Opoko, where we live, and we go around um, the moku puni. So we learn the different moku, as well as the famous rains of, of each moku. So now when we go and we do presentations, we try to do the same for you folks. Now obviously we're not from Kauai, you folks are the experts, but um, we, we took a shot at it, you know, based on the, the research that we did. And so um, this is based on uh, these moku anyway of, of Kauai. So we just basically plugged <coughs> in where, where I had the rain names of Oahu and put in the rain names for Kauai. And our whole um, idea with this is we want it to be used. So if you want to use this, and teach it to your keiki or whoever else. Um, it's a pretty easy mele to learn, um, just to share that information and get them started young so that this can be part of their common knowledge, you know? Mm -hmm. um, just as they're learning the ABCs, <coughs> one, two, threes, they should also be learning about their aina mm -hmm. because that will connect <coughs> them for a lifetime and know, help them know who they are and be stronger and more hot hail for that because our kupuna were so hot hail of their aina and we still are today. So let's kind of go over these um, names. You can pronounce with me. Ko'olo, Puna, Kona, Napali, Halelea. Okay, so, yeah, yeah, but you know what? I'm a cool. That's what I do at Kamehameha. So this is just a version of the man. So Ko'olo Moku, Ko'olo, which is, yeah, okay. Kukupa'u would be one of the rain names. The Kuna District, Makanoi. We only pick one rain, okay? There's tons of rains, but we only pick one. You yeah. might have to share if you um, want to hold on. And then moving on, we have Kona District with the Kevai rain. Waimea has the Kapa'ako rain. Any extra Then Napali has the Lake Kokoula. Halelea has the Makakoi rain, okay? Now, you guys, if you want to record us, please record. Because we want this, to, we want people to share. Yeah, we want people to share. 
And, and retool it, you know, if you want to add in other ring names or other place names, well, go for it. Yeah, and actually right now at Kamehameha where I teach, I'm teaching my homana this song to the Oahu and they, they enjoy it. So anyway, I'm going to teach you the chorus. Um, you got to get your hands ready because your hands, get your hands free, you're going to be doing some rain motions, okay? So notice it says, ua e ua la. Try that. Ua e ua la. Akuni kawaii. Rain, rain, and circle Kauai with the rain. Okay, so on your right, lift up your hands and ua. Then the other side, ua. Okay, now apuni is circling Kauai with rain. That's it. That's the chorus. <laughs> There's verses before that, but you don't have to worry about that. Okay, so we just practice again. Ua e. Ua Mom. 
mahalo, mahalo, everyone. Mahalo especially to Lani and to um, Kauai Library. Mahalo, mahalo to you. was a, a, a rain here and also in, in Maui. Would those rains be the same or would they be called Kea for different reasons? So, yeah, and I, I didn't explain this well, but what I meant to say was that, yeah, um, they probably have the same name because they are similar. So you would find a similar type rain in Mauna Maui as you would um, here in that's, that's our belief. And the example that we have to back that up actually was Kokia um, Nogo Meyer had shared with us an example that I think is in the book. Uh, he went out to um, a Pukuna gathering, and these were native speakers, Mana Leo, um, in White and I. And one of the Pukuna, it started to rain, and one of the Pukuna said something like, Ale keia he, he wa ku kalahale. It's not a ku kalahare rain. Um, what did the kukuna say? It's not a ku kalahare rain, so because it's going to last long. It's a long lasting rain. So ku kalahare rain is a rain so famous to Honolulu, but it's a short rain so that you can stand under the house eaves and it'll pass over eventually. Whereas this one required them to actually go inside a building because they'd be waiting out the rain. And so the fact that she said that while she was in White and I, which is not known for the ku kalahare rain, suggests to us anyway that these are types of rain and they recognize it. And so you could have a care rain in multiple places because it's probably a similar type of rain. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, Easy yeah. question, <laughs> I can find books. Yes, yes we will. Yeah. And I, I put away things because we have a plane to catch, but we will sign books. <laughs> <laughs> and we just want to mahalo you folks. Mahalo.